Alright guys, <clears throat> thanks for Zion. Well, uh, let me give you a little background on how my life's been going. Uh, some of you might know I live in North Louisiana, or I lived in North Louisiana, that's my home, my home stomping ground, and uh, I moved to Denver in the la uh, last three weeks or so, and before I came to Denver, uh, to go to a gunsmithing school, I bought me a 44 Magnum, 629, <clears throat> 4 inch. Uh, now, this thing is kind of special to me because it took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted, and it took me a bit longer to actually find the thing for a good price. Uh, I bought uh, this thing. This thing was made in 1986, okay? I, uh, it is used, but it was very lightly used. <clears throat> I bought this, uh, it's 629, 4 inch, Smith & Wesson. Original wood grips with the medallions and all that good stuff. And the reason I wanted this thing was for a couple of reasons. Uh, my father's 357 has the same features, and I uh, just ended up having the wood grips. I, I like a whole, uh, not a code, but a, a Packmire gripper grips or something, but they're always out of stock, so kind of sucks. Uh, but I'm alright with the wood grips right now. Stainless with wood is just, you know, something about it. One of the features that I wanted was this right here, a hammer mounted firing pin. These seem to be a little bit more reliable to me, okay, not not saying they are, I'm saying they are to me. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, that they're a little bit more reliable than the frame mounted bushing type firing pin. I've heard uh, reports of the new 629's having uh, problems with them getting stuck in place and stuff like that. And it's more parts, really, uh, if you think about it. Uh, you know, you have three different parts. You have, fire, you know, you have an extra part for the uh, bushing the uh, and the spring. This has the same set, uh, I guess the same number, I guess, because it has a bushing and uh, that holds the uh, firing pin in the little rocker slot for the uh, firing, I mean the hammer, but uh, I don't know, they seem to be a little bit better made, just by me, I guess, you know, this by my opinion. Uh, it's six shot, stainless, thus the six uh, of the 629. <clears throat> It has no no internal lock because it was made in 1986 and liberals were just now kind of crawling out of their holes and trying to take gun rights from us. Uh, so it doesn't have it has the oval shaped cylinder release and uh, it doesn't have that triangulated one. You can get an oval for. Uh, you know, you can get a, a full size oval for your uh, new ones. They still fit, but uh, it will cover up that uh, that lock. So if you ever needed to get to it for some reason, you have to take the slide release off and then get to it. And yeah, <clears throat> good Smith and Wesson style sights. The uh, back one, the back sight, just a tad bit dingy. Uh, Let's see. Four inches of rifling. Now, in some autos, they say, you know, might have a six inch, like, say, the Desert Eagle has six inches of, uh, six inch barrel. Well, that's not true. From end to end, it is six, you know, from the breech to the muzzle, it is it's six inches, but it includes the chamber. So you only get, like, four and a half, four and a quarter uh, inches of rifling. This is an actual four inches of rifling. So, uh, because it's measured from the crush cone to the uh, to the muzzle. Uh, whoever had this before me took very good care of it, uh, and 
uh, the only um, the only wear and tear I can really tell on the gun is where the sli uh, the cylinder stop uh, hits. And this is a dash one, which means it's been counterboard, and uh, it's uh. Oh, what else did that mean? It does not have the endurance package. That's what what I was trying to think of. Uh, the endurance package. I'm not sure what it all contains. And uh, I've got a book on all that. So if you're really curious about that, you can ask, and I can look it up for you. Uh, the uh, the endurance package just tends to give it a longer life of firing full house magnums. I plan to download magnums to a uh, 44, hot 44 special, you know, maybe 1100 feet per second or something, just to keep the life of the revolver and be able to shoot 44 magnums. Just still be able to shoot uh, factory uh, 44 magnums when I really, when the mood strikes. So, <clears throat> before I left, I went and found uh, I went and talked to my gun store, and the only gun store there, uh, there in my hometown. Uh, and I asked him if I could buy a, a, hand, a handgun case from him. Well, he was nice enough to give me a hand case, or you know, a hard case to put the gun in. At the moment, I've got four, yeah, four cylinders worth of ammo. I used to have six, but I bought a Desert Eagle, and it's got two of them worth sitting in the mags. Uh, waiting and ready to go. Uh, so it it takes the 240 grain mag text and this takes this will eat whatever uh, whatever ammo that won't fit in the, in the Desert Eagle. You know, and the, I just recently bought the Desert Eagle like this week. Uh, I have a review out on it at the same time. <clears throat> so it got stripper uh, not stripper clips uh, quick strips. You know, two at a time in the cylinder. 225 grain uh, FTX bullets. You know, lever revolution. I like me some lever revolution. Uh, they're little fast movers. You know, at just about the same weight as a 45, going about 510 feet per second faster than uh, than uh, the hottest 44. Not 44, 45 ACP out of Hornady's selection, so pretty nice. Uh, the 300 grain in the HKS speed loader, you know, you slip them in and you turn them. Now these, uh -oh. these work very nicely in this thing. Uh, and the 300 grains are wonderful. 300 grain XTP hollow points from Hornady. They're very nice. I'll, and that's my favorite load. Got an HKS of the 225s and a quick strip of uh, the 300s. So that's uh, four cylinders worth of stuff. And uh, I've got <clears throat> new comp, uh, comp 2 speed loaders. They're kind of iffy though. So uh, I'm going to show you how they work. With the HKS, you would put them in and turn the uh, knob. This one you can still load like this. You line up the cylinders and just press. But see, these are short uh, snap caps, so it won't press all the way. So I'm still testing these to see how they're going to function. I may end up selling them for a couple bucks to somebody. Uh, you know, that. He uses a Red Hawk because they're made for a Red Hawk, but uh, that's another thing. These things are hard to get to close up again. Oh well. Anyways, that's kind of one of the reasons I'm testing them. Uh, so the HKS work and the quick strips work very nicely in this thing. 
very beautiful gun and I'm just I'm pretty happy that I got what I was looking for you know and exactly what I was looking for and it came at a good time seven hundred dollars bought from a guy out of Hanover Pennsylvania off a gun broker we did a personal deal instead of going through the gun broker website and uh... It was a very nice guy, uh, and the trigger on this thing is awesome. No burrs whatsoever. Got a little bit of over travel in the uh, single action. Just a tad bit, but uh, you can't really. I mean, and the timing in the revolver is nice. If you want to check your timing, you hold your thumb against it and cock it. If it doesn't slide into that slot uh, as the hammer's coming to its full cock, then you got something out of time on either your ratchet or your hand of the revolver. But uh, this one, I was worried about having them work with the timing or any of that because you feed this thing full house, uh, you know, full house magnums, and it. Its lifespan goes to about a thousand to twelve hundred rounds. Uh, <clears throat> that's because of the endurance package not being on it. Uh, so this one I think has had less than two hundred, from what I was told, and it sure looked like it. Uh, I think it was mostly a safe queen, really, and I'm pretty happy to get a hold of it. It isn't going to be a safe queen with me. They love me a 44 Magnum. I'm only going to shoot maybe uh, six rounds of beefalo bore out of it, but uh, be 270 grains going at uh, 1,400 feet per second. So just as fast as the 225s, just heavier. So <clears throat> don't let a blow a top strap off of such a nice gun. And just, you know, you got to have that one nice gun that you've really been looking for, you know. I like a 4-inch uh, barrel. It's a nice compromise between the typical 5-inch and your, uh, you know, the short, super shorts. Uh, not too bulky, not too small. So, it's uh, pretty nice. Not that heavy. Gotta find a good holster for it though. Uh, like a shoulder holster. Uh, a horizontal shoulder holster. Can't find one other than, uh, I think there's one company that makes a nylon, but I'd really like a leather because stainless, wood, and leather all go together so, somehow. Anyhow. <clears throat> I'll probably have to get one made by one of the guys up here in Denver. Uh, they're pretty good about being specialized in that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you got any questions, uh, feel free to ask. There's not much else I can really go over on the revolver, to tell you the truth. I mean, you know, in, besides internals. Because uh, this is one of those guns that I got it the way I want it. I don't have to do anything extra to it other than shoot it and clean it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment, rate, all that good junk.